हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम अर्धेन्दु दे एंड यू आर वाचिंग माय एजुकेशनल चैनल एडिस इंग्लिश लिटरेचर इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू एनालाइज टी एस एलियट्स प्रिल्यूट्स इनफैक्ट आई उल ट्राई टू क्रिटिकली एनालाइज और एप्रिसिएट द पोएम हुईच पोट्रेज द रटेननेस द करपन एंड द डिकेडेंस अफ कन्टेम्पोरारि सोसाइटी आई मिन द मडार्न सोसाइटी T.S. Eliot, a 1948 Nobel laureate, is one of the giants of modern literature. He is a poet, literary critic, dramatist, an editor, and a publisher. T.S. Eliot's Preludes, which is included in Prufoc and other observations, which was published in 1917 is a collection of poems. In fact, the poem Preludes is frankly a satirical poem on modern society. The theme is love or the lovelessness. And uh, the whole of the proof of series receives an ironic treatment, an ironic treatment of the modern day human situation. The rottenness, the corruption, the decadence of contemporary society, which is spiritually bankrupt, is exposed here with a rare pregnancy. And it is not unfair to say that the author has miserably failed here to notice anything positive in life. This, however, does not in any way reduce the significance of this particular poem and the series of these Prupok series poems, which in fact are excellent poetic manifestations on the particular theme of love or lovelessness of spiritual bankruptcy of the modern society. And the poems are particularly this poem too, Preludes, is also invested with beautiful usage of imagery. So we'll try to find or locate the particular images here. As it is already stated in his preludes, Eliot depicts starkly the meaninglessness of the society, of the, uh, the modern day slums of a metropolitan or a city or an urban location at nightfall and in the morning and he might have boston in his ideology or in his ideas simply it depicts the urban landscape and expresses disgust with the rottenness of modern life the poem presents us with city scenes which mostly depict ugliness and squalor in fact any modern city can be identified with it. It vividly throws light upon the decadence of societal values and losing bonds of humanity. Thus, we can easily identify the subject with that of Charles Louis Philip, uh, whose uh, writing particularly who, um, about the Paris, the city, uh, he projected the city as a city of degradation, poverty and gloom. Such projections is also here represented. In terms of several images, Eliot tries to depict the modern society. There is an emotional unity out of fragmentary impressions and a note of reverie. Now, we can lead our discussion into the poem when we start reading these particular poems. But keep in mind that Eliot has tried to see the world, see the modern society as a fragmented piece. Uh, it is fragmented ideologically, it is fragmented in spiritual entity too. So uh, Eliot's preludes is an interesting reading. Let's start the reading, the poem. The winter evening settles down with smell of steak in passageways. Six o'clock. The poem begins with a description of evening. Dull, 
and uninspiring. And if we can say so, lifeless winter is in front of us. It is six o'clock. The barn smell of an unpleasant sensation of a modern man is there. The winter evening settles down with smell of sticks in passageways. So this fragmented first photograph of the modern city is of dejection of a modern man, utterly destroyed, utterly fragmented, utterly littered in fragments, spiritually bankrupt. The burnt out ends of smoky days and now a ghastly sour wraps the creamy scraps of withered leaves about your feet and newspapers from back and lots. The sour's beat, broken blinds and chimney pots and at a corner of the street a lonely cab hot steams and stamps and then the lightning of the lamps. With a set of adjectives, the scene appears grimy, withered, vacant, broken and lonely. How are the modern days? Lays as a barn ends of smoked cigarette. It's raining outside and a gust of wind blowing with the old littered newspapers. Meaningless are the news as well as its readers. The shower hits the curtains, window panes and chimney pots. Only but the cab horse is disturbed by this rain. Impliedly, modern man is in wasteland. How can he, how can we think of regeneration? Even though it is raining outside. The second stanza shifts to a morning scene where modern man with their false personality resume their falsified days. The days are wasted. The men are total spiritual bankrupt. The morning comes to consciousness of pain still mills of beer from the sawdust trampled street with all its muddy feet that face to early coffee stands. The scenes are set in any modern city. The morning conscience of pain still smells of beer from the sawdust trampled street during snowfall lead us to boring aspects of our existence. The industrial workmen with all its muddy feet are pressing in front of coffee stands in the early morning. This fragmented scenario of the morning just tells us one thing that day has begun. One tedious day has once again begun. So it repeats the same since monotonousness of the modern society it hints. With the other masquerades, that time resumes. One think of all the hands that are raising dingy shades in a thousand furnished rooms. The morning reminds the masquerades or the pretentious gestures of modern man, time and modern man. Modern men are here referred to be as hands. They are devoid of soul, insipid, spiritually bankrupt. With their hands, modern men are seen raising dingy sets of their apartment at urban housing houses with thousand furnished rooms crammed together, living together. The scenes are well-known slum areas or a housing section of the modern metropolitan cities. And these are all of dejection, destruction, and spiritual bankruptcy. You toss the blanket from the bed. You lay upon your back and wait it. 
you dozed and watched the night night dribbling the thousand sordid images the third stanza is more vivid with imagery the stanza begins with the word you which probably suggests a prostitute or a modern man the modern man like that of a prostitute is no way out of the own out beds blanket and a vivid waiting is there for the customers the thousand sordid images of which your soul was constituted they flickered against the ceiling and when all the world came back and the light crept up between the shutters with the thousand sordid images of waste soul between the shutters a modern man lives a life of spent waste and sentimentality if a prostitute is selling hard physical ruminants the modern men are paralyzed paralyzed from being elevated paralyzed of salvation or edification and you heard the sparrows in the gutters you had such a vision of the street as the street hardly understands sitting along the bed's edge where you curled the papers from your hair or clasped the yellow soles of feet in the palm of both soiled hands the sparrow in the gutters suggests lechery a so of spiritual degradation of modern society modern man finds himself on the verge of extinction on the bed's edge he hardly understands the goal of his life roaming along the streets you had such a vision of a street as the street hardly understand so you can you can shift the imagery is a complex one interrelated one like that of a metaphysical concepts co relative imagery is are here his soul stretched tight across the skies that fade behind the city block or trampled by insistent feet at 4 and 5 and 6 o'clock and short square fingers stuffing pipes and evening newspapers and eyes as you of certain certainties the conscience of a blackened street impatient to assume the world the last stanza again shifts to evening in a balancing pot the spiritually stopped modern man in their savvy surroundings find their mean in certain certainties a small material gain is enough for their existence they are not thinking lot something greater spirituality so here all the references of their existence is like a pathetic reminiscence of their present state i am moved by fancies that are called around these images and cling the notion of some infinitely gentle in finally suffering things the poet is so moved by the dart of spirituality in urban life that he feels the spiritual agony of the world like that of christ i am moved by fancies that are called around these imageries and cling the notion of some infinitely gentle infinitely suffering things so what is this infinitely suffering the suffering of the christ for the atonement of the civilization atonement of the humanity the poet feels the same kind of pain only to arouse the spiritually stupid civilization in front of him why if your hand across your mouth and laugh the walls resolve like ancient women gathering fuel in back and lots the concluding three lines of these preludes eliot here finds degeneration decay monotony in our contemporary human life vividly portraying the metaphysical emptiness of men in modern metropolis if not in every modern society 
However, he is determined to redeem the soul like ancient women gathering fuel in vacant lots. It looks like a vain attempt to do so. It's a weight like Sicilian myth. We, we, we really feel pity for ourselves for the helpless and lonely situation of ours. But is there a way to set himself free? It's spiritual meditation and detachment from the material bondage is the only way by which we can free ourselves from this kind of monotonous spiritual bankruptcy or materialism. And it is all possible by attainment or a kind of salvation or a kind of journey of Christ or a kind of en route to Om Shanti, Om Shanti, a spiritual education of us. So, a journey of us towards that salvation is the only way by which modern man can find their solace, find their fairness from this cage of material confinement. So I think this particular poem preludes will lead you towards T.S. Eliot's poetry, a kind of modern metaphysical poem. Dan and T.S. Eliot goes parallel here. A little bit of complexity involving in each and every line which tells interrelated, correlated imageries only to make his point of view more vivid. We can find Several of the imageries here, the newspaper, the chimneys, the references of the modern man, the, the housing society and all, all those windows and men waiting, the coffee houses, the streets, the bar tents of the smoked cigarettes and here we can find out the references of the clock. So each and even the ancient women gathering fuels. So each and every imageries are interrelated and it all in a, like that of a garland, it states the same thing, the monotony of the modern society. And the chain of references is only for stating our sorry affairs of the modern existence, spiritual bankruptcy of us. Now how it can be remedied, the spiritual goal or the kind of thinking like that of a salvation and the kind of thinking like that of a, a spiritual acclaim or finding out the inner peace, shanti in heart is the only solace one modern man can, can, can search for for their attunement at this present state of affairs. So just read this particular poem and if you find any sort of difficulty just ask me I'll try my best to give some proper explanation in understanding those lines. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye. Thank you.